a steam plant using a rebuilt Stuart 10 V steam engine, part two. Assembling the Cleveland Steam Pisces Babcock type boiler. Installing the twin gas burners and working on the outer frame parts. I'm making this video in two parts. This first one covers the gas burners and the frame parts. The next video in the series will be all about fitting the boiler fittings and completing the job. Whichever way round you assemble the boiler, you need to look at these. Detailed drawings, exploded views and full instructions for assembling this boiler. It is not difficult. The instructions are well written and easy to follow. I of course didn't bother at first looking at the instructions, but I soon did. More about that later. Here's the first part and it's very simple. Fitting the twin gas burners onto the burner plate. This has definitely been thought out well. Two holes and two slots to allow some limited longitudinal adjustment of the gas jets in the Venturi tubes. The first thing to do is to remove the M3 bolts which are underneath the gas burners and are going to be used to hold the gas burners to the plate. Included in the kit is some of this stuff. It's actually nut lock. Normally I would use Loctite 542 which is thread sealant but this is nut lock and it's very sticky and ideal for the job. It will only work though if you cut off the end to let the liquid out of the bottle. The first application of the nut lock is underneath the burners in the holes because I do not want any leaks in this area. Why I have I put a red cross on this? I'm magnetising my screwdriver but I needn't have bothered because all of the bolts are stainless steel. I used a larger screwdriver that was quite a tight fit in the slot so I could hold the bolts in the screwdriver and stop them dropping on the floor. After mounting the first gas burner, I turned my attention to the second one. It was at this point that I inserted the gas jet holder into the first burner. Once again, I am applying some of this SAS thread locker to the other burner's holes. This burner screws into the slots in the burner plate, so there is some adjustment. This is a good feature. It will allow perfect positioning of the gas jet in the Venturis. I found a position that looked OK, and here you can clearly see the application. As I slide the Venturi tube of the second burner up and down the gas jet holder. Once I was happy with the position, I tightened the bolts underneath. This system allows adjustment of the gas burners for optimum burn. In this clip, I'm about to use some of this SAS nut locker to secure the gas pipe union on the end of the gas pipe. The last part of this job is to tighten the two securing bolts to hold the gas jets tight in the Venturis. The gas jet burner mounting plate is held to the main upright part of the frame using one M3 bolt. The other end of the burner mounting is a push fit in the other upright. I'm going to have to slightly deviate from the instructions on this next part. I'm supplying this to the customer unpainted. And although it's not essential to dismantle the boiler to paint it, he may wish to do so. The boiler side panels are held to the uprights using six M3 machine screws at each side. Here I'm screwing them in position to illustrate that the uprights are threaded M3. In with the nuts and bolts kit are four nuts and these are designed to be fitted to the middle bolts only as the belt and braces approach to hold the boiler together. Personally, I don't think this is necessary. My reason for doing this is just to make it easy for the customer to dismantle the boiler should he want to paint it the hard way. The easy way is just to mask off the boiler and the fittings and spray the outer casing. There's a special fitting to put in the front upright and you mustn't miss this out. It's just a piece of brass that's machined to go into the large hole in the upright and then it's screwed in place with an M3 bolt. The small but important part is just to support the weight of the boiler at the front. There is actually a bush in the boiler which takes an M3 bolt to hold it in position against the front panel. But this solitary M3 bolt would not have been strong enough to support the boiler's weight. Here I'm assembling the sides and I'm doing this out of sequence. This is wrong. Even though these side panels are stainless steel and they're not going to go rusty, they will get a little bit scorched unless they have heat-resistant material fitted inside. 
At this point I thought it was a good idea to have a look at the instructions to see which is the best way to secure the heat insulation to the stainless steel. It's not a good idea to do it like this. I really did consider doing it this way but it's not right. What you need to do is use some silicone rubber sealant to stick the heat insulation in place. It's very important though not to put any sealant too close to the edge. This is to allow sufficient space at each side for the front and rear uprights. At first it looks like this heat insulation material is too long, but it isn't. Here I'm carefully using a screwdriver, I'm not applying much pressure, just enough to crease it, so that it follows the contour of the side panel. I suppose you could use some more silicone sealant for this part of the job, but it's really not necessary. I'm applying the sealant where I think it should go, and you don't need a lot of it. The sealant isn't carrying any weight, it's only holding this heat resistant material. The instructions suggest using pieces of wood to hold the heat insulation in place until the sealant sets. But I'm in the smaller of my two workshops and I don't have any pieces of wood lying around, as it's next to the kitchen. Instead, I came up with this idea. For one side, I used a steel rule held in place with some plastic clamps. And I must mention that here I am not following the instructions. I used the first panel with the steel rule attached to press against the heat insulation which is stuck to the other side. Then I used the front and rear uprights and the chimney to press down the heat insulation material onto the sealant on the other side. I've been using a screwdriver throughout this video and it was a perfect fit to hold everything in place. I can't do anything more now until the silicone sealant has cured. So that's it from me, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.